What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're talking all about lung zones. Why is it important and what does it mean? Now, some of you may have just started learning about this. Others of you may have already forgotten it. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said, we're talking all about lung zones here today. And I wanna start this conversation off by talking about why lung zones are important. What does it mean? Well, when you're talking about lung zones, you have to realize that the whole conversation comes down to VQ ratio. Nothing else more than that. Now, okay, what is VQ ratio? VQ ratio is ventilation to perfusion ratio. You see, it's very, very important that you understand that for gas and oxygen, to get into the pulmonary capillary blood flow and out to the body and CO2 to be brought back. It's very important that we understand that ventilation within the alveoli has to occur, but then there also has to be blood flow past those alveoli to pick up the gas that's coming across. And so ventilation to perfusion ratio is very, very important when you understand that it's not just about the air that's coming in. It's also about the blood flow that's going past. So that's what ventilation is. Now, the VQ ratio, that's what the VQ ratio is. Now, when we talk about the V, we're talking all about ventilation. We talk about the Q, we're talking all about perfusion. And of course, for this conversation, when we say perfusion, we're talking about pulmonary perfusion. So is the ventilation that's coming into the alveoli being matched by perfusion of those alveoli? Now, normal, normal VQ ratio is 0.8 to 1.0. That's, this, you got to remember that, okay? 0.8 to 1.0. There are certain disease processes that will affect the VQ ratio. Some will cause the VQ ratio to increase, such as a pulmonary embolism. Some of them will cause the VQ ratio to decrease, such as pneumonia. That's another video for another day. What we're talking about today is what happens in the normal, healthy, upright individual. Because VQ ratio is a conversation for those individuals as well. And this is the information you need to be an expert, above average, exceptional respiratory therapist. Now, let's talk about this. When we talk about lung zones, there's three lung zones. There's zone one, zone two, and zone three. Now I've drawn a line here to, to differentiate them for you. So you can see that the apices are zone one, the middle portions of the lungs are zone two, and the bases are zone three. So we can, we can come over here and take this another way and say apices and bases. So we understand that zone one, it's tied to the apices. Zone three is tied to the bases. So it goes one, two, three. Makes sense, right? <clears throat> now, what I'm about to tell you, I have no doubt you already understand if you'll just think about it from a different perspective. And here's the perspective I want you to think about it from. I have a bottle of smart water here, and it's not because I'm endorsed by smart water. Believe me, I'm not. Uh, I use this bottle because I know you're smart. And, and you're going to understand this as I make it out to you. Now, look what I want to point out to you. There is a line of water right here around the middle of the bottle. Okay. Now, I have also divided this bottle into three different regions. This is region one. This is region two. This is region three. Now, when you see where the line of water is, you realize that there is more water and more fluid at the bottom of this bottle than there is at the top. Why? Now I know what you're thinking right here. I already know the answer to this. The answer is, duh, Joe, it's gravity. Gravity pulls the fluid down. You're exactly right. So what we see here in this, in this bottle of water is that fluid goes down, air goes up. If I take this bottle and flip it over, fluid goes down, air goes up. 100% true. If I turn it on its side, fluid goes down, air goes up. That's the message 
that you need to take away from this video. Think about it as you're learning these concepts. Gravity will increase blood flow to the bases of the lungs, to the bottom of the lungs, compared to the apices of the lungs. <clears throat> In the same conversation, air will go up. More air to the top, less air to the bases. Makes sense, right? But now let's talk about it in regards to DQ ratio. What that means is, is that if there's more air that goes to the top, then at the top, ventilation will exceed perfusion. That means that you'll have more air and less blood flow. Now we look at the bases down here in zone three, and what we'll find is, is that there's more blood flow and less air. So what does that mean? That means perfusion exceeds ventilation. Fair enough. Now, when we look at the middle zone, the zone two, remember, look at the bottle here, right? This is zone two right here. There's your water line. Half of it is fluid, half of it is air. That's exactly right. That means there's equal parts perfusion to equal parts ventilation. So what we see is, is that ventilation equals perfusion in zone two. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that when we put numbers to this, what we're gonna see is, is that in zone two, if we have five parts ventilation and five parts perfusion, then we see that five divided by five is indeed 1.0. That's our DQ ratio. That's the middle zone, that's zone two. Now let's talk about zone one. Remember in zone one, what we see is, is that ventilation exceeds perfusion. And so let's say that we have five divided by three. Well, that's what it is. Ventilation in excess of perfusion. Now what happens if we do the math on this, right? Let's just take five. Let's take five divided by three. <clears throat> what we get is 1.6. That means that our VQ ratio in our apices, we know it to be zone one, is an increase in our VQ ratio. It tells us that there's more ventilation than there is perfusion. Okay, well, let's do the same thing, but let's go down here to the bases and let's see what the story is in the bases. Remember, in the bases, perfusion exceeds ventilation, right? So let's just go, I don't know, three divided by six. Now remember, six is, is perfusion, three is ventilation, okay? So what we see when we do that, we say, okay, well, that means that, let's keep the numbers the same. Let's go three over five, okay? Opposite of what I did up here. So when we do this, we say, okay, our VQ ratio of three divided by five is 0.6. Very good. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm happy with this, right? What I realize is that the zone one has an increase in our VQ ratio. Zone two has a normal VQ ratio. Zone three has a reduced VQ ratio. Okay. Why does that matter? We have to remember where all of the blood flow that passes through these lungs you have to remember that it all dumps back into the left atrium via the pulmonary veins. So if you just look at zone one, you go, well, that doesn't seem good. And when you look at zone three by itself, you go, well, that doesn't look good either. But when you put all of this together and you take an average, you see that 1.6 plus one plus 0.6 equals 3.2 and you divide that by the three zones we see that we get a vq ratio between all of these that is 1.0 that's our normal vq ratio it's a beautiful thing it's magical how the body operates like this but also always leads back to homeostasis and normal and that's the game you're playing when you're talking about lung zones. Now, there's a, there's a chapter in Egan's, and this comes out of chapter nine. This is the 12th edition. So the 12th edition of Egan's, 
Uh, this is on page 178. Write that down. Uh, page page uh, 178. You can go on and you can find a rule of thumb where it talks all about this. And here's what it says. It says, as a consequence of having low blood pressure in some areas of the pulmonary circulation and being susceptible to what? To gravity. Yeah, being susceptible to gravity, the blood flow is much higher in the lung bases in resting upright subjects than in the lung apices. That's what I just said. More blood flow to the bases than compared to the apices. Gravity-related effects also occur in supine or recumbent positions, but are less pronounced. What does that mean? That means you take somebody and you put them on their back for a short period of time. This same concept happens, but it gets redistributed. It's now different. It's less pronounced. It's, it has less effect. But this explains also VQ ratio of lung zones when you have that severely hypoxemic patient that you decide to prone, you're now are trying to match up ventilation to perfusion, more blood flow to the healthy lung units, as opposed to putting more blood flow into the gravity dependent zones where there's less perfusion due to consolidation in other regions, atelectasis and other impairments that might happen during mechanical ventilation. So at the end of the day, here's what it comes down to. Lung zone one, increased dead space. Ventilation in excess of perfusion. Lung zone two, pretty good. Equals up pretty good, normal. Lung zone three, perfusion in excess of ventilation. That takes us now, that now more down the road of talking about shunt and diffusion impacts. At the end of the day, though, the normal, healthy, upright individual, all of this balances out to give us a normal VQ ratio. And that's why lung zones are important to understand which patient you need to put in which position to improve their gas exchange. Now, this is uh, where you can find some free resources that I want to share with you. This is in my Respiratory Coach Academy, and I have this course right here. It's Respiratory Coach, free access to cheat sheets and resources that I want you to get access to. I promise you there's stuff in there that I just put in there occasionally just to help you along your journey as you become a respiratory therapist. Now, from this website, you can also find uh, my TMC boot camp, my CSE boot camp, my pharmacology course, and my ABG courses. These are obviously paid. I'm not asking you to buy them. I want you to go get into that course right there. Look in the video description below for the link to sign up for that course. That's VQ ratio. That's lung zones. I'm respiratory coach. Here's where you can find me. Here on YouTube, you're already here. Do me a favor, hit the like and the subscribe button so you're ready for new videos that I'm gonna be putting out every single week. Be ready for them. Respiratory Coach on Instagram, Respiratory Coach on TikTok, and at Joe Lewis on LinkedIn. If you're an RT student and you're watching this, go create a LinkedIn account right now. Would I love for you to watch me on Instagram and TikTok? For sure. Do I care more about your professional success? Yes. LinkedIn is the place where you can connect with the directors and the people across this country to find your dream job. I promise you. Always send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I would love to, to carry on this conversation, to answer your questions, to engage with you, to inspire you, to motivate you to be the very, very best respiratory therapist that you can be. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.